Well, hello again. Guess what? This thing, we're down to our next to last item. The other item being this little jewel over here that I showed you in the last video. This uh, record rack is going to be a piece of cake to dismantle. It really is. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, we have an end over here and we have an end over here. But this is all one unit. There's no way it'll separate and come apart. They're all sort of stamped or welded in there somehow. I don't know. Pressed in, I think. But on the back is the toroid memory unit, which is this, sil this uh, silver, <laughs> this gold box. And that thing comes off with two screws here and two screws over here. And then the whole thing lifts off. This electrical wire goes with it. This electrical wire also goes with it. This goes down to our pulse amplifier. I'll explain to you how this thing uh, operates in conjunction with the pulse amplifier. Brendan sent me a very good description of it. Like I said, he sits up there in Michigan and you know he just bought a brand new uh, 4K television. While I'm sitting down here slaving away, he's, he's laying back in his easy chair watching his 4K TV. I told him, you know, he's up there eating bonbons every day while I'm doing all the heavy lifting. But that's okay. That's okay. I don't mind, you know. He comes up with some pretty good stuff once in a while, so all is forgiven in that department. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark... Oh, I'll tell you what. Let me turn this thing around the other way. All right, down here, I'm just going to take something like this little screwdriver, and, I, you know, I don't want to lose the position of this. I don't think there's going to be a problem, but there is some movement that has occurred, as you can see right there. I don't know if those are elongated holes. I think they are. You can see a little space over here, okay? Well, you know, but there again, I don't even know if this thing is in the right position, but we're not going to take any chances. I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to scratch around the bottom here on both sides the exact position of each of these. Then we're going to take out the four screws and remove our little toroidal memory unit or Tormat memory unit they call it. It's not going to be easy to clean. I don't think I'll be able to get it clean at all. But uh, interesting here it says uh, guaranteed for five years. Void if abused or opened. Ho oh, ho! I'm scared. One more thing. They even have a picture of a toroid right there. A toroid coil. It's just it would be uh, carbon of some kind, and it's just a little donut. That's what it is. And then the wires wrapped around, 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 down through the inside, up through the outside, just around and around and around. And it would be a different. Uh, I don't know. Maybe each one of them would be the same size. Maybe the same number of windings. I'm not about to open this up to find out. I'll worry about that at a later date, later time. Well, as expected, they are indeed elongated holes, so I'm glad I scratched in. This is aluminum, so it was easy to dig a scratch into. And uh, now we've got the screws out. Well, well, I'll tell you what, we'll just go ahead and lift it off, and then uh, we'll take a look at the underside here in a second. That's all there is to it. Look at that, look at that. Now here's the other side of the record rack, and we have these... Uh, pieces of cloth that are glued on there. I took some super glue. They were just kind of hanging. I glued them all back on the best I could and uh, has the, uh, you know, has the record selection numbers on them, you know, E9 and all the way up here, you know, to C, B and A. Same thing on the bottom down here. That's so the maintenance guy who changes the records out once a week or whatever, however often they did it in this particular jukebox, they, they would know exactly what record they were pulling. After eyeballing this thing, I've come to the conclusion that this end right here is identical to the other end. Every little, you know, bend and, and shape and mold, except for one thing. The screws that mount the, the toroidal or the toroid memory unit are in the rear here. And on this one here, on the front, you have the holes also. But over here on this one, Except for everything else is identical. Over here on the front on this one, there are no holes. So this is the round part of the record. This is the front of the record rack. This this particular leg over here, without the holes in it, goes to the left. Well, that'll be easy enough. All right, now the question is, should I just go ahead and tape off these uh, numbers with some masking tape, give it a good wash? And 
and then go ahead and just spray it as all one unit. Yeah, the heck with that. Let's tear it apart. Now, as I take these two screws off on each side, there's a keeper on the other side that they screw into. You can see it flopping around down there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me move the screw around you. There you go. See how it's moving around? So that's what it screws into is this keeper. Or actually, it's just a, a two-hole nut. So we got to make sure we don't lose those. This uh, top screw that I had to remove also has uh, kind of a weird nut on it, okay? It fits up underneath, goes up underneath here like so, and then the screw goes through. See the, see the uh, screwdriver wiggling in there? All right. Well, so far so good. Uh, all these screws that held the legs in, I've got the legs just propped up here. And... Uh, We'll go ahead and take all these babies and throw them in the evapor rust and just let them soak overnight or a day or so. And uh, these screws here, I'm also going to throw in the evapor rust. These at the top are a different size than these at the bottom down here. Now to our uh, tor Tormat uh, memory unit, they call it. It's called a, what is this thing, a 100, it's a T, it's called a 100 TM, toroid memory unit. 100 TM. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do, let's look at the bottom of it. Remember I told you inside this thing is just one coil after another side by side all the way down. And they look they look just like that thing right there. If you don't know what a toroid coil is, look it up. And down here, each one of those coils is attached to one of these buttons right here. These little nubs you see. And those fingers on the bottom of are uh, this, these little fingers here, if you'll recall, I, don't, I can't get to it right now, they're all the way in the back back there, they're little fingers, let me get a little focus here, that stick down on the bottom of that thing, oh, they stick up, there they are right there, my goodness sakes, get your mind right here, John, see those little fingers, those fingers, they ride, they spring up and down, watch, well, they probably won't even spring up and down now, yeah, they do, they spring up and down, these are brand new ones I put in there, and they ride across these bumps and they in turn send the signal down to the uh, pulse amplifier uh, through this wire which plugs in the top of that pulse amplifier but this is this is another you know very important item if you screw this up you don't have a jukebox as simple as that i guess if you think about it you screw up just about any item on this jukebox you're not going to have a jukebox you'll have to either fix it or find a different part or something so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and clean these all off real good with alcohol and a brush and then i'm going to take i'm going to clean this area down here you can see where the wear is but that's not that's not important what's important are these nubs and they all look to be in really good shape i don't see any problem with them at all they all look really good so once we get them clean we're going to put some dielectric grease on them and uh Make sure that that thing is as functional as I can get it. All I'm going to do is take my little old brush and dip it down in there. That I don't know if I mentioned it in the previous video or not, but Scott, that, that pump bottle that, uh, that you sent, the pump just quit. Wouldn't work at all. I tried everything to get it to work, so we're back to the old bottle here. Anyway, we'll go ahead and just give her a good scrub. That's all we're going to do. I'm not going to use any kind of cleaner other than alcohol, 91%. And then I'll wipe it down with a rag. We're going to take our time cleaning this, by the way. We've got plenty of time. We're way ahead of the schedule, actually. I think old Brenda's not may not have to wait until Saturday week. That would be kind of nice, wouldn't it? Well, things are still moving along here. It's the next day. And these little cloth strips that have the numbers on them, they are really bugging me. You know, if it weren't for the two strips, top and bottom, I I could probably just live with this one. I really, you know, I don't need the bottom one, you know. It's, it's nice to have it all, but I only need really one. It's not like I change records out every week like they did years ago. If I could get this uh, strip off here in one piece, you know, all the way down, it's kind of a tough cloth almost, like a, 
I don't know, it almost feels like the old friction tape from years ago, that sort of texture. If I could get that off, all the way down, and this one here is almost destroyed anyway, so it doesn't matter much here. I'll try to get this off also. If I can do that, I can put this entire record rack in the dishwasher, which is what I would prefer to do for cleaning purposes prior to painting. Here's the brilliant plan. I take my old X-Acto knife here and I put it underneath there. Some of it, as you can see, is already peeled up, so it's not going to be all that difficult. I just kind of slide, take my time, take my time all the way down and remove this one. I would, it would be nice if I could get reproduction of these. I'd, I'd buy some, but I haven't been able to find them anywhere. If anybody knows where I can get these reproduction uh, number tapes, let me know. So let's see how it works out. Well, this is going so good, i got to show you how I'm doing it in case you ever have to do it yourself. You don't just slide the, the blade underneath it and keep pushing. You kind of lay the blade flat and saw it like a little saw. Look at here. Look at that. One piece right off. Ooh. This is coming along better than expected. This is a piece of cake up to here. Let's see what happens now. Got to keep that blade flat, though. It to, I mean, the blade has to be with the edge of the blade flat, not the blade itself, okay? The edge. You want your knife edge to be flat. Let me see. Come down. Oops, getting a little rough here. Let me go ahead and uh, any anything that gets scratched up or dug up along here in the process of doing this, I can sand down prior to painting. She's starting to give me a little bit of a problem, so I can start from the other end where it might be a little easier. That's doing a little better. Let me take two hands on this. I might even have to go here and start in the middle somewhere. Yeah, see, that's that may be the key to this mess. It's going to take two hands. Well, I'm happy to say that I pulled it off. I can't believe it. Now, the reason I needed two hands was I had to press down hard on the blade. You don't want the blade tipping up this way or tipping down that way. You got to press it down and keep it level. Lots of pressure on there. You don't want to press it so hard you break the blade, but you want to press it really hard to where it stays underneath the strip. You don't want it cutting up into the strip by accident, okay? Here they've rolled, when they put the tape on, they rolled it over the edge. So the first thing we have to do is get that edge up so we can then work on the flat spot. So by working along underneath here, like so, we can lift that edge, okay? It should come up if you just take your time, take your time, a little bit at a time. Boy, this stuff is really brittle, really old and shot, just like so. All right, once we get it on the flat spot, once we get it to where we can do with the flat spot, we take it off the exact same way we did the other one. Well, for whatever good it did, I did manage to get it off in one piece. And, uh, you know, it's just a hunk of junk. I'm probably going to toss it out anyway. I just want to see if I could do it. There it is. Not, most of the letters are gone, unreadable. Just total junk. Look at that. Sorry state of affairs. I don't think I want to put that back on. Matter of fact, I know I'm not going to put it back on. But I am going to sand all this down after it goes through the dishwasher. We'll get all the old glue off. I might do it before I run it through the dishwasher. And, and then uh, once it goes through, all this dirt you see down between the blades, I hope, I hope it all disappears. Most of it anyway. Some of it's rust. Time for another tip of the day. One of the most indispensable things, small item that I really can't go without on my workbench is a brass bristle brush. These brass bristle brushes, they, they just, they will, they'll remove old gasket, old glue, they take off a lot of rust without tearing up the paint. And uh, you can get them at Walmart in a pack, I think Stanley, are these Stanley? You know, they don't have a name on them, but it really doesn't matter, brass is brass. Uh, I used to buy them in a pack down there. You get a steel bristle brush, a brass, and a fiber. A little bit, uh, the fiber is, you know, maybe twice as stiff as a toothbrush, as a hard toothbrush. And uh, these things are great for cleaning off dirt and surface rust and gasket and glue. I used them to take the remaining gasket off, or used it to take the remaining gasket material off that was here, or the glue off that was holding these uh, number things down. Cleans them up really good. I had some of it had to be sanded off as really heavy glue, but when you're all done, you just give it a good shine. It really does 
really does the trick prior to repainting. Sometimes you don't even have to de-rust. You can just kind of use this to, to rub the surface and it takes the rust right off. And once again, uh, we have the tour or the tour mat back on the bench. Yes, we do, because we still have a couple of things to finish up. I have to put that power cord in the corner that I lopped off. Remember, I chopped off that power cord a few videos ago, and uh, we'll be replacing that with this right here. It doesn't take a long one. It's just a short one. I'm going to give it a little extra length this time. I don't know why. just feel like doing it, I guess. And I also mentioned that in uh, two videos ago, I think that we were going to replace the 6x4 with a 1N4007 diode. Now, this is a half-wave rectifier. Uh, some people missed that when they first saw it. You know, 6x4, yes, is a full-wave rectifier. However, if you tie the plates together, you get a half-wave rectifier, and that's what they did here. Not sure why, but they did. I asked Brennan about that. He said, I'm not sure why either, but that's what they did. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to connect the cathode of a diode to pin 7 and we're going to connect the anode to pin 6 and that's exactly what we've done here we have the cathode of one diode connected to pin 7 and we have the anode of a second diode connected to pin 6 they're side by side now what's going on here I just told you I was going to connect one diode but I have two and they're in series it's a cathode, cathode anode cathode anode what's going on well I'm fixing to tell you years ago I learned on the antique radio forum it was one of the first things I learned about these old radios was if you have a diode that needs replacing it's just a single diode it's okay to go ahead and hook a second one to it in series like so okay now why is that well if either one of these diodes were to open up, you're, you're dead in the water. You know, you, got, you have an open circuit. However, if either one was to short, the other one is there to back it up. Okay? Piece of cake, huh? So what I have here, let's say this diode were to short. Well, it would then become just a straight wire. And this one would just continue on as if nothing happened, and vice versa. So it's kind of a, I don't know, a protective circuit type thing and there's virtually no voltage loss at all between the especially these look how tiny that thing is now anyway i hope you learned something here here we go with another tip of the day guys uh, whenever you're waiting for your soldering iron to heat up or you're waiting uh for whatever you always keep your eyes moving in the chassis you're working on keep it moving keep it looking no matter how many times you've been in it keep it moving now, i'm waiting for the iron to heat up right now and, you know, so I can remove this wire I just cut, this one right here. And I, I got looking down around where the, uh, you know, the electrolytics are. I just kind of look and look, make sure I didn't miss anything. And then I happened to spot this right here that I had not yet seen before. That wire right there. Now, isn't that interesting? This one has lots of solder on it. This one has nothing. Now, why is that? Well, let's find out. Look at that. Not even soldered. All right, now I had missed that completely. That's why you always keep your eyes moving. There's probably one or two more items in here I, I missed also. After a while, you get cross-eyed looking at this stuff, but that doesn't matter. You got to keep looking, keep looking. All right, one more little tidbit that needs to be taken care of. Well, the old power cord is now hooked up, so we've got our diodes in, our power cord. Now, this is uh, the original strain relief they had on that thing. It was a round cord. It's probably still serviceable, but it's a bit boogered up. Not so sure I want to use that one. Anyway, when I went to Hamvention the last two years, I picked up some brand new strain reliefs. I think I paid, uh, I don't know, 10 cents a piece for these. For some reason, these were more expensive than everything else, but for a dime, I figured, what the heck. So we're going to find out if I can, uh, it looks like it'll fit in there. But it might be too loose when I get it. If that's the case, then I'll just go back to the old one. Let's see how it works. Well, as you can see, the old strain relief's a little, uh, a little loose. It's not the strain relief's fault. It's the cord. The cord is smaller than what's required by the strain relief. 
So, there is a space down in there. I can stick my screwdriver down in between there and you can see it tightens it right up. Now, I could jam something down in there. Maybe uh, one of these here, you know, so they're already split in half. I could cut it all the way in half and then jam it down in there to take up that space. Or I have another one here. A white one, same thing. I could cut that in half and jam that down in there, but I'm not too keen on those ideas. So, what we need to do here, I think, is think in reverse. If we can't, if we can't make the hole smaller, we need to make the wire bigger. So, how are we going to do that? Well, I happen to have a little piece of flexible rubber hose. Don't ask me where it came from. I don't know. It was in my junk pile. I get these. I have these drawers full of crap I collect over the years. I have no idea. I may have picked it up while walking through the plant where I used to work. And said someday that might come in handy. Stick it in my pocket, laying on the floor, you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take out. You know, I'm going. I'm not going to wrap it around the entire wire. I'll probably just maybe partially. I'll have to cut it down a little bit and then uh, put it around the wire and then jam it back down in there. See what happens. We'll have to remove this uh, strain relief. Get that baby up out of there and see what happens. Well, there it is. I just went ahead and wrapped it all the way around the wire. Put the space to the rear where it came together. And now it's nice and tight, okay? All right, enough of that. Uh, let's move on to something else that you'll probably like a whole lot better. <laughs> Well, it's another cold, brisk day in Arkansas. It's supposed to warm up, though, but check out our neighbor's yard. There's a lot of frost and everything. It looks like his, his yard's on fire over there. Today is Sunday, the 28th of January, and uh, what we're going to do is I've got this thing. It's been run through the dishwasher, and then I gave it a good brush with, uh, you know, a paintbrush in between each of the blades there as best I can. We got them. As, it's as clean as it's going to get. It's as simple as that. And uh, I've, I have to put the legs back on. Now, I painted the inside of the legs on both sides, but I did not paint the outside. Uh, I'll wait and paint the outside after we get it all screwed together. Get the uh, screws in, which reminds me all the screws and bolts and everything right here. They've been de-rusted, looking real good. But I didn't want to paint the outside, you know, until it was all put together. And uh, our little deal on that uh, play counter that I stuck down in the Vapo Rust, it's, uh, it's looking real good. It's nice. It's a little stiff right now because it needs a little oil down in these parts here on this slider. Let me see, this thing slides back and forth for some reason. Not even certain why, but any, I guess it's for adjusting, adjusting this thing back and forth so it shows the proper number through the window in case it's a little bit out of alignment I assume <laughs> anyway I got to put a clear coat on that now and grease it up a couple of more parts here that have been cleaned and, and uh, given a clear coat they've got to go on the base that our mechanism sets on I've got to uh, repair a crack <clears throat> in the speaker cone one speaker cone it's a small crack you know I'll get that taken care of all of that will be done before the next video and uh, this morning, we got a, I got a comment from our good subscriber, Scott Johnston, out in Virginia. And Scott said, you know, what we need is a mountain man breakfast to take, uh, to eat a mountain man breakfast to take us into the final stretch. You know, he's right about that. I was thinking about the mountain man breakfast maybe about a week or 10 days ago. I said, you know, I haven't made a mountain man breakfast in so long. Well, I looked around in the refrigerator this morning in the freezer, and sure enough, I have all the makings to do the mountain man breakfast. I couldn't believe it. I'm gonna make it not outside over charcoal or anything like that. I'm gonna do it in the house, on the stove in a cast iron skillet. It's just the wife and I uh, that'll be eating it. Grandma, she doesn't like meat, she doesn't like eggs. I mean, you know, 87 years old and all of a sudden she doesn't like anything. <laughs> so it'll be just wifey and I, and we're gonna do that. We're gonna do it next time. So, what, so next time, here's what you can expect. If you don't wanna see it, don't tune in, but this is what we're gonna do next time. We're going to start putting all the pieces and parts together, plugging them up, then we'll stop, uh, put in a few ingredients in our fry pan, back out, put a couple, you know, plug in a couple of more things, maybe put in some tubes and stop, you know, show the next part on the Mountain Man breakfast. We'll, we'll store it, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way to the end when we do our final turn on. 
and if the jukebox turns on, plays a record, picks the record up, I'm going to have two or three records in these slots. If it picks it up, plays it, we're going to celebrate, well at least I am, by eating the Mountain Man breakfast. And if, But if it doesn't play, you know, if something happens, it just doesn't want to work, and or something goes wrong, which is what, you know, Brendan feels that the chances of this thing working the first time are pretty slim. I think Sparky said the same thing. Boy, talk about party poopers, huh? <laughs> I say it'll work the first time, every time. Positive all the way. Anyway, if, but just by some mere unforeseen, as I call them, uh, happens and it doesn't work, well... We'll still eat the Mountain Man breakfast. I don't care. Well, let's go ahead and get this thing together right now so I can paint the two ends, okay? Before I take this thing back out in the garage and give it a final painting, uh, in case some of you didn't understand why I painted the inside of this, these legs and left the outside until now, the reason being is I want to paint the screw heads and the bolt heads all at the same time. I didn't want to paint them separately. You know, and then have to mess around with them. Just put them in, give them a spray, done. Well, that's it for the record rack. All done. I haven't bolted it on. I just got it sitting there so you kind of get an idea what the whole thing is going to look like. Uh, next time, I'll be removing all the blue tape that I put on the sockets and the plugs and all that for when I clear coated it. And then we're going to take and clean every single... Well, we're not going to do that next time. I'm going to do that between now and next time. You don't need to look at all that crap. I'm going to take these little uh, things called Dentec Easy Brushes. Uh, Brendan brought this to my attention. That someone he had, someone had told him about it, or or he read about it, or something. Anyway, we're going to dip it down in some uh, uh, alcohol, and we're going to take those little. It's a tiny little brush for picking away your teeth, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to clean every little socket pin. That I bought these months ago. Brendan probably forgot all about telling me about this, but I bought them months ago and they've been sitting in my drawer. We're going to clean every socket pin. I'm going to remove excess grease. I'm going to do a whole bunch of general little ditty ditties between now and the next video. And if we're lucky, we will be able to turn this baby on and play a record. So until next time, this is John.